Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I am back with another live paper crafting class for you. I'm live on Facebook on January 2nd, 2019. We're already in a new year. <laughs> How exciting. Um, I'm starting a couple minutes early because I am excited to show you this self-closing box. Now you may have seen these before. So if you already know how to make them, great, but I'm going to show you a version of them using some new products that we have in our upcoming Occasions catalog and actually um, a new product in our celebration brochure as well. So those, those all start tomorrow. So I'm so excited. Um, the self-closing box I'm going to show you uses the typical measurements that a lot of demonstrators have shown on their videos. But I also have another version that I thought I would share with you too. I'm starting to see some comments come in. Yay, Brina's here and Deborah and there's Vicki. <laughs> I get to see you soon. <laughs> and Avanel and oh my gosh, let's see. Oh wow, so many people are here with us. Melissa, is your mom here too? <laughs> Make sure you share this video to get everybody on board so we can see this fun project that I have to share with you today. Um, Michael from California. Hi, Michael. <laughs> All right, awesome. I am going to first share with you uh, the supplies like I always do, and then I'm going to walk you through the project. I have a couple versions to show you, and then I have this bigger version, so different measurements. Um, before I do that, I want to remind you that your comments do get you entered into a prize drawing at the end. And we draw for two prizes, one during this video and one during my next broadcast. So that means that the last broadcast that I had three weeks ago, <laughs> we get to draw for today. That was like, I don't even remember the date. Anyways, um, we'll find it. <laughs> we'll find that video. So good morning, everyone. Oh, thank you, Karen. Yes, I just did a paper pumpkin alternative video. And anybody who's a subscriber of mine out there, just know that my video this time is going to be late. I need to get an email out to all of you to let you know that my exclusive video is going to be late. Normally, I, I put it out there on the second. Today's the second. It's the first day my kids are back in school. Um, I'm free. The house is quiet. It's awesome. All right, let's start with the measurements, okay? <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. Um, the measurements for the self-closing box is going to use the All My Love Designer Series paper. Again, this is, this is using new products from the upcoming Occasions catalog and the Celebration brochure. The Celebration item that I'm going to be using is the Organdy Ribbon. We'll use the balmy blue color because that matches the, the small amount of blue that's in this paper here, the designer paper. And then we'll use some coordinating cardstock like the Lovely Lipstick cardstock, Whisper White, Champagne foil sheets. I love those foil sheets, by the way, because um, champagne is it's kind of like a cross between silver and gold. It has kind of a rosy tone to it. And then the other supplies, um, we'll be using the wonderful romance stamp set, although my finished versions that I have for you today are using a different stamp set that actually coordinates with the All My Love paper. The ink, the, then we have some tools like the trimmer, take your pick, which, my gosh, everybody needs to have one of these. these this tool is awesome. I don't think I like craft without it now. Um, the two inch circle punch starburst and two and a quarter inch, those are for layering, but you can also look at the other versions that I have that are completed versions and see that there's so many more options for what you can do. So if you don't have those punches, you can definitely add your fun little embellishment to your box in different ways. And then some lots of adhesives. Oh my gosh, lots of adhesives. And then we'll need some things that aren't necessarily Stampin' Up, but things that you should have in your house, like the ruler, the pencil, the packaging tape. Okay, so here we go. Happy New Year to you too, Dawn. <laughs> it's Don, Dawn GJ. I can't even say it fast, but I love it when she tells me that. Her last name um, starts with a G and a J. <laughs> it's very fun. Okay, who else do we have with us? Susan is here, yay! This is so awesome, you guys. Okay, I'm going to stop reading comments. I get excited because I see all these familiar names pop up. We'll start by bringing you down to the desktop. Here we go. All right, this project, it's super fun. In fact, let me show you a finished version today. So this isn't my favorite. I have a different version that is one of my favorites, but this is the self-closing box, and it's very geometrical. It has um, triangle pieces to it, but you can see it opens and then it closes naturally just because of the shape of the box. So I'm going to be showing, showing you how to make this, okay? All right, here we go. Let's start with our lovely lipstick cardstock. 
I'm reading some comments here. Not getting spots from the dyes imprinted on your foil. Oh, <laughs> yes, let me back up here a minute. That was Karen who asked that question. So the, she's asking because the foil sheets um, do get impressions in them very easily. And so I save uh, some cutting mats that are totally clean and I use those anytime I'm going to cut through foil. That is, that's what I do. I'm sure that there's another tip out there though that might help for getting um, foil sheets cut through the big shot when you're die cutting them without getting the scratchy marks from the cutting mats on them. So let me know if you have something further to share with Karen, okay you guys? Happy New Year to everybody. All right, so we're gonna cut our cardstock in half. I'm so excited to be back, I can't even tell you. My goodness, that is bright. Let's see if we can um, zoom out a bit here. Oh, that's still, that doesn't help, does it? Okay, well, anyways, we will try to cut this quickly. We're going, <laughs> lots of bright color there. Five and a half inches. We're cutting this at five and a half. And then we're gonna get rid of half of it so it's a little bit easier to read, hopefully. Let's bring that back like that. Oh my goodness sakes. That, usually it's black that does that to my screen, but today the red is doing it. Well, um, let's just maybe put something on top of it as we go. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> so now what we want to do, that kind of helped, didn't it? I'm going to zoom in a, a tad because I want you to see these measurements. We're going to actually turn it this way first, and we're going to score at the half inch mark, which you can use right on this side of the, of the trimmer. So we're going to bring it to the half inch mark here and score. This will be the top of our box and then if we flip it around this way we're gonna score at one inch oh it's not too bright now is it I wonder if it's the sunshine coming through my window hang on maybe that'll help hopefully okay so one inch on this side this will be the bottom of the box okay good afternoon Judy and now on this side we're gonna score actually we're gonna we're gonna okay let's do this because you actually have to take this piece and you have to divide it into four sections plus an extra at the end. Okay, so the first two inch section that we go up to here, so here's my trimmer at two inches, we're just going to cut into the bottom. So here's the top score line, I think you can see that up there. And then here's the bottom score line, which is an inch in. So we're gonna take our trimming blade and we're gonna start on that score line and pull down. So we've just sliced through the two inch section here at the bottom. And now we're going to move it to the four inch section and we're going to score first and then we're going to take that blade again, the cutting blade, start at the score line and slice down. I'm so sorry it's so bright. I'm not sure what's going on you guys. Um, and now we're going to go to the six inch mark. Ugh. <laughs> it's too bright. <laughs> um, the six inch mark and we're going to just do the slice. So bring it to the score, score line and pull down and slice and then we'll go to the eight inch mark so it's two four six eight and we'll score and then we'll bring the blade and we'll slice so let's move this out of the way for a minute and I'm going to show you oh my goodness sakes maybe this was the wrong color to choose <laughs> oh well all right so um, here are the score lines as you can see with the cuts in them does that help so you can see two inches cut four inches score and cut, two inches cut, four, um, and I'm sorry, six inches cut and eight inches score and cut. But we don't put score lines through the middle here because those are gonna become diagonal lines. So now we bring in our pencil. I don't know how to reduce the glare, you guys. I'm feeling so bad. We um, bring in our pencil and we're going to make a little pencil mark where the intersection of those score lines are up here in the center and then we're going to do that over here on this side and right on the edge so let's see if I can show you that at a good angle <laughs> not sure if I can but there's a mark here here and here okay and then down here I'm just going to make a little pencil mark where this two inch cut is connected to the score line and where the six inch cut is because those pencil marks we're going to um, connect and you can use a ruler to do that or you can use the trimmer. And I'm going to use the trimmer because I want you to see how easy it is to do with the trimmer. So you're going to angle it 
and you're going to position this mark here with this pencil mark here between the little channel that is on this arm that comes down on your trimmer. Okay, so you want to make sure you can see both of those marks in the middle there. And then you can either take the scoring blade and push down where that one starts and push all the way up to the top. Or you can even use this tool here, this um, simply score, I'm sorry, this take your pick tool. And you can press down here and just run it along that channel till you get to that mark there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for you because I think you can see it better if I do it that way. I feel so bad about the glare. Can you guys tell I'm a little distracted by that? <laughs> it is a happy color. You're right, Susan. <laughs> All right. Um, lovely lipstick. It's kind of like a deep pink. Um, I wouldn't call it like a Melon Mambo pink because Melon Mambo is more like a, a bright pink. This is more of, um, I don't know, it's a lipstick pink. <laughs> it's a pink that's a little calmer. Um, but still pinkish reddish, you know, it's a, a deep one. Okay, we've got that done. So we've connected all those points. So now we have this little score line here, this one here, this one here. It looks like you can see good now that I've got some angles to the box and that one there. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom out just a tad and we're going to cut our designer paper, but I want you to see how the box is forming here. This is the, the top part of the box. This is the part that's going to connect right here. Okay, this is the part that closes. And then this is the bottom that closes the whole box up together. Okay, so the bottom part of the box is actually like a normal box. And the top part is just straight across. Let me show you a pattern that I made. Oh my gosh, I should have used that color. <laughs> It's so much better, better than the other one. Um, and so I drew in the score lines here and you can see where the cuts are. We need to remove this little corner and add some adhesive. So let's do that and then we'll move on with cutting our designer paper. So let's take our paper snips or any kind of scissors that you have and cut in like this. Remember, if you are commenting, you're getting entered into a prize drawing. So, um, and the prizes are kind of cool. They each involve some new product that I have. So we're going to put tear and tape adhesive just along this strip. This is going to connect the box um, front to the back like that. And if you put it close to the score line, it's really going to hold well. Now we flip it over and as in this pattern flipped over, you want to put tear and tape adhesive on the bottom of two opposite little sides there. So we'll do that. So yes, and if you share this, it is lovely lipstick, yes Donna. Um, if you share this video, then, and you comment that you shared it, you get entered into the prize too. So please share, I would love it if you shared. Okay, now we're gonna cut our designer paper. So I'm gonna grab that All My Love designer paper, and we're gonna use this fun pattern here. Now because this portion is four inches between this score line and this score line, and four inches between this score line and this score line. We have a four by four section to cover with paper. We're gonna go down a quarter of an inch. You wanna go at least a quarter of an inch, okay? So as we come in here, we're going to cut three and a quarter by three and a quarter. This is already three and a quarter inches wide. I'm sorry, three and three quarters. So three and three quarter inches wide by three and three quarter inches. So we're going down a quarter or a fourth of an inch in both directions. We're gonna cut two of those because you have one on the front and one on the back. Okay. Now on these pieces, because they are directional, we wanna make sure that they're positioned the right way. I would rather have my flowers opened up to the sky than open down like this. So I wanna make sure that my papers are facing the right way. And then I'm going to draw, I can actually just do this with one. I'm going to either use my ruler, which is what I suggested in your supplies, is to put a, is to grab a ruler, or you can use the measurements on your trimmer. Hi Arlene from BC, British Columbia. <laughs> Thanks for joining again. Um, so half of three and three quarter inches is just under two. 
Um, so basically you take that two inch mark, which is half of four, and you want to go down another eighth of an inch, which is half of a quarter inch, right? So you would be um, putting a little mark there at one and seven eighths inches. And actually I did that on the wrong end because we want to be putting that on the bottom of the paper. There we go. So we do it right here, which will be hard to see through this. We can do it. Okay, so now we've got our, actually I'm gonna do it on this one because it's white. <laughs> So on the bottom of this one, I'm gonna do one and seven eighths inches. There we go. Now I can take these two papers and stack them because I can cut through two pieces of designer paper at the same time. Now, if you're not confident enough to do that yourself, then just mark both papers and cut them each separately. But we're gonna stack them and I'm gonna look at that little mark down there and I'm, gonna, I'm going to line up this corner with that mark on my trimmer like that. So my mark is here and my corner is there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yes. Okay. Now when I cut, I do not want to go into a sharp corner like that first. If I'm going to go in that direction, I actually want to start my trimming blade in, you know, somewhat on the paper, push it down and then push away and then come back in and slice. But I do have a pretty good straight edge here so I can actually push into that edge instead. Just be careful about those corners because you can just kind of jam them up. Okay, now we're gonna go this way and we'll do the same thing. So we're lining up that same mark with this corner. And I'm gonna show you on this side what I mean about going into a corner because this is a corner here. You wanna start a little bit into your paper, push your cutting blade down, pull out. So now I've got a slice in there and then make sure you're wiggled back in there and slice upward and away, and then you won't get that, that corner jammed. Okay, keep those pieces lined up because this one matches with those corners, and this one matches with those corners. Okay, you don't wanna mix them up, especially if you have an, a distinctive pattern going on. Okay, so we're gonna push those aside. We're gonna bring our, our box piece back in. <laughs> yes, Karen, I do like to do that. I can't wait to get this paper on here, by the way. She was mentioning my nail color. I like to co color coordinate. So I'm going to glue each of these pieces in place and I cannot wait to do that because look at it, it's making it easy to see again. Yay. All right, so let's bring in a special glue. This glue is going to be better than the original glue I used. The original adhesive that I used was snail adhesive and it just didn't hold because the box pulls on itself. In fact, here, let me, See, now you can see it. Can you see the papers pulling away? I was being tricky before and holding them at the corner so you really couldn't tell, but they're coming apart. And I kept it that way on purpose so that you could see that you really wanna have a much stronger adhesive. And so this liquid glue adhesive is going to be great. Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> Glad that you joined. Hi, Ladon. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Okay, so let's start with this piece. We're gonna flip it over and I'm doing it over the silicone mat because I wanna make sure that if I get any adhesive on my table, it's gonna go on the mat first. And you can grab a sponge um, if you want to and kind of sponge the, color, the um, glue on as well. So if you did that though, this is what I recommend. I recommend going off to one edge like that so that the glue stays on one side of your silicone mat and you don't get it all gluey. <laughs> is that a word? Gluey. All right, so now we can put this on here and we got to be really careful to make sure we put it right between those score lines. And then let's do that with the other pieces. Um, you can get pretty close up to the edge with this adhesive though. This is our multi-purpose liquid glue and it's messy. <laughs> well, actually it's not too messy. I am one who loves dry, tape runner kind of glue. I prefer not to get glue or ink or anything on my fingers. <laughs> I'm a neat freak and you guys have teased me about it. Some of you have said try to get over it, but I have been a crafter for years and years and years since I was a little kid. And I tell you, I just, I'm clean. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, that doesn't mean that I can't craft if I'm a clean person, right? Clean people support me. 
Okay, so now on the other side, in fact, you know what? Let's just go ahead and assemble the box like this for now because I don't want to bore you with adding that paper. I can do that later. But before I move this glue, uh, um, this mat out of the way, I'm going to bring in one that has dried. And I'm going to show you this. Someone was like, oh my gosh, show that again. So packing tape. Just take some packing tape when your glue has dried on this stuff. Rub it in and it'll peel up that adhesive. It'll take it right off of there. It's awesome. I don't have real big chunks of it on here anymore. But it removes the glue. Fun, fun tip. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. So, next. Okay, pretend like I have that paper over here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna seal up our box. And you'll notice that our box has a half, like a, it can fold in half here. If you tuck that in, it's completely in half. So the best way to put adhesive onto a box when you can fold it flat is to do it that way. So we're gonna lift up this strip of sticky strip, or I'm sorry, tear and tape backing. We'll hold that flat and we'll just flatten this on top of itself. Awesome. So there, that's done. Now you'll notice when I pop this up that the folds automatically kind of crease out like that. Now we have to do the bottom of the box and the bottom is gonna fold like a regular box. So we'll bring in the flaps that do not have the, um, the glue on them, the tape, okay? Karen, thanks for empathizing with me. <laughs> okay, and then we'll open these up and peel off the backing. Okay, oops, if I can get my fingernail underneath there. Okay, so yes, I have lovely lipstick nail polish on. <laughs> it's not called that though, I don't know what it's called. Okay, and then we'll just fold one down, keeping, making sure that your bottom flaps are lined up. And you can kind of feel the edges um, along the box too to make sure that your, your flap here is gonna be straight. And then we'll do the same thing to this side. Do you see how the flaps completely are like half of what the measurement of the bottom is? So the flaps are one inch and the, the measurement of the bottom is about two inches, okay? So on this box, though, well, I'll show that to you later. On a bigger box, I thought I was doing that, and I wasn't, but it still works if the flaps are a little bit bigger. It won't work if the flaps are a little bit smaller because then you're gonna have a hole in there, but um, make them half the, half the dimension, half, half of this width or larger. I wouldn't say too large either. Half of that width or up to that width. <laughs> All right, so our box is ready to be decorated now. Now we can just kind of crease those measurements, make them really strong here. I should have done that before I assembled, sorry. I was so excited about the whole glue thing. And then you can kind of flap these back and forth. And now your box is self-standing. It's ready to go, it's ready to be decorated. Let's bring in our fun layering pieces for that. We're gonna stamp our image from, I didn't even show you the stamp set yet. Oh my gosh, our stamp set is called Wonderful Romance and we're gonna be using this image here. You are the best thing I never knew I needed. Um, on my other two samples, I used Forever Lovely. Okay, so we're gonna stamp that image down onto my Whisper White scrap. We're gonna use our smaller punch, punch that out. If you've never used these punches before, Use them upside down. They do have a lock on them, so when you push them flat, you can lock them shut, and you can open them back up using that same thing. So let me show you on this one here. So it's locked, push it forward, and now it unlocks. So we're gonna grab our champagne foil sheet, and we will punch out our pinkish metallic color. It's really kind of like a pinkish color, I think. And then on the last one, we've got the two and a quarter inch punch. So we'll punch that from our leftover lovely lipstick scrap. This, oh, you guys gotta see this ribbon. Okay, let me close this up. We don't need that. This ribbon right here, five yards of each of these colors, that's 25 yards. 
um, is a freebie during celebration. Celebration begins tomorrow. If you place a $50 order during celebration, which is January 3rd through March 31st, and that's with any demonstrator, you get the benefits of celebration. You can pick this product for free to add onto your order, or there's a whole bunch of other things, including stamp sets and designer series paper, um, wooden elements, embellishments, that kind of stuff. It's really fun. So here we go. Let's flip this over. We'll use snail to put on the back. Now you could use, if you don't have snail, you could use you know, your liquid glue again, but again, I don't like getting messy, so I'm not using that liquid glue again. <laughs> And now we'll put this layer. Oh, sometimes the foil sheets are hard to get adhesive onto, but they will stick when placed against the other paper. It's just hard to run it on there. So I had to run it on the back of, or the front of the uh, lipstick. Okay, now we're gonna add dimensionals to that. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for joining from Tennessee. <laughs> Hi, Dustin. I hope, hopefully you can join um, in what? Another 35 minutes when we're in our group our Stampers with Art group, because I have more to share. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna push that, put that right here on the front of the box, eyeballing the, the words. That's how you wanna get it straight. So you eyeball the words and you make sure that those are parallel to the bottom of the box or to this little score line here. Now let's grab our balmy blue. This is a, the blue that's actually, um, oh, here, let's zoom in. <laughs> That's the blue that you'll see in just a few little sections of this designer paper. This designer paper, by the way, I used a lot of it up already. I don't even know if I can show you all the pieces. I'll try. Okay, so we're just going to tie a little bow, an overhand knot. And this is very forgiving ribbon, which makes it um, a little bit hard to manip manipulate in that it will go wherever you put it. So you want to just really make sure that you know what you're doing when you're pulling on it. There we go. It's super soft. And I forgot my ribbon snips. I do have a scissors that I use just for ribbon. I don't know how many of you do, but it's a wise idea because you don't want to dull, use a dull scissors to cut ribbon. It gets it all frayed and stuff. So let's pick up a glue dot and let's just set that right up here in the corner and it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love that box. I think that one's my favorite out of all the ones I did. Okay, so I have this, this box, which isn't completely finished yet, but I will add that designer paper soon. I have this one, which I shared with you at the beginning, and that's using our combo ribbon pack that's in the Occasions catalog. And right now I don't have the name of it. And then I have this one, which is using the other ribbon that is in that combo pack. So it's actually a, a two pack of ribbon. It's got flirty flamingo and lovely lipstick in it. And these two boxes I made using the images from Forever Lovely. So the Love You. And then there's one down here that says Happy Valentine's Day. It's kind of hard to notice that, but it's there. And then this is the designer paper and what it looks like. Oops, let me make sure you guys can see all of those in the camera. There we go. Okay. And then this is the designer paper. And I, I think I can only show you parts and pieces. This is so sad. I've used this one up. <laughs> I've used this one up pretty much completely. So these three sheets, and this is what they look like on the back side. And then I have also, let's see here. I'm gonna zoom out a tad. And then I have these, this one here. Ah, I don't have these ready. There we go. So I have those three sheets also in this pack of designer paper, and that's the back side of those, okay? So that is called All My Love. This is the other box that I have to show you, and it is using our Floral Romance um, designer series paper. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, I used a full sheet of designer paper on this one. Uh, not some, some ugh, not designer paper, a full sheet of cardstock. So a full sheet of an eight and a half by 11 cardstock on this one. And I didn't seal the bottom yet because I wanted to show you that my flaps were a little bit further in than half the size, but that's that actually works pretty well. So it's okay if it's a little further in. I will have those measurements on my blog when I post this project and the um, other project photos of the other projects and this video. 
on Saturday. So on Saturday, uh, a few days from now is when this will be on my blog. I hope you subscribe to my blog at stampyourartout.com. I have the little green thing down there in the corner. And then um, if you, oops, if you need to get some products, you can shop with me online. Um, you can shop at stampyourartout.com. You can, there's a shop button on my page too. But if you have a demonstrator, shop with them. Celebration starts tomorrow. It's going to be so awesome. Anyone who buys products every $50, you get to get a celebration item. Um, you can even host a party during that time and get extra Stampin' Rewards, which is basically our, our word for free, free product, um, hosting free product. So take advantage of that. It's an awesome time to buy. In fact, it's an awesome time to get celebration, I'm sorry, um, to get paper pumpkin prepaid subscriptions too. So if you love paper pumpkin, get a prepaid subscription during that time and you can earn celebration rewards with that. Um, if you're subscribing month to month, you might as well do the prepaid, right? Get, get some perks from it. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that if you love Stampin' Up! products, this is a great time to just get the kit. You don't have to do anything further with it if you don't want to, but you get the kit, you get a huge discount on products, you get to buy $175 worth of product and spend only $99 plus tax on it. So it's an awesome deal. And you can also have the option of getting a really fun tote. So be checking out uh, my blog posts. Go to my blog at stampyardo.com or check out what Stampin' Up! has to show on their actual website. If you already have a demonstrator, go to them. Okay, let's do prizes, you guys. I'm so excited. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> All right, so there is a new stamp set called Humming Along that I have as a prize. And I also have these fun wooden elements. Um, they're called butterfly elements. This is a celebration free product. And along with that, I have a roll of ribbon, which I hung on to because I love the color so much, but I decided I better let it go. It's a past ribbon. Um, I don't even know where, where, when we offered it, but it's um, Calypso Coral and it's like a shimmer ribbon. It's very pretty. Okay, so humming along or the butterfly elements with ribbon. And let's go to the computer now so that we can, uh, oops, I better make sure. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I have to open my window so I can see my computer again. We're going to the um, Facebook page so I can draw, so I can draw a winner. Here we go. Let's find that broadcast from today. It should be it coming up. Hang on a minute. There we go. All right, so I'm going to copy the link here. If you have commented up to this point in some way, you are going to be entered into the prize drawing. Now, if you didn't get a chance to enter um, a comment during this live broadcast, you still have another week where you can still comment on this video and you can then, oh, look at that, 103 of you today that commented. Thank you so much for joining. And now I'm gonna start, but you still have a chance, you still have a week because the first winner picks what they want and then the second winner that I draw next week gets what is left over. So you still have a prize and the winner is Trudy Oliver. Yay for Trudy. And she shared, thank you so much. You can see her comment right here. She shared this video with her friends and family. Okay, now what I'm gonna do um, let's make sure that we click here because I don't want to miss Trudy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, my videos and I'm going to click on last, last week's, not last week's, but three weeks ago. Three weeks ago we had, which broadcast was it? It was this one here. So I'm going to open that one up. We'll stop it from talking. Nice still shot there, Rachel. And we will... <laughs> copy the link address on that and bring that URL into our little thingy here. Let's see. Let's see what we got. How many commenters? 168. Awesome. And let's find out who the winner is from that last time. It is Julie Penal. Yay. Or Penal. I'm not sure how to say it, but she said love these. Thank you, Julie. So I will click on her name and contact her. And if I do not reach, if I do not reach you guys, um, please reach out to me because sometimes I have trouble getting a hold of the winners. So um, 
And the last, uh, Trudy, by the way, no, Julie, by the way, she got the prize that was um, left over from last time. We have the clear faceted gems and then some white and silver twine. So thank you so much. I will be broadcasting next week. Yes, like Missy said, congratulations to the winners. Thanks for coming in late, Chris. You can always play, you know, do the replay, but hopefully you guys enjoyed what I had to share today. Excited. Celebration starting tomorrow. Okay, have fun everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.